since Old Ford in Otero County, it's becoming a challenge to keep operations the same, and many residents are concerned about what could change. News 5's Andy Cohen recently took a trip to the fort to speak with the superintendent and get some answers. A trip to Ben's old fort is a trip back in time. You can hear the clanging of the, of the iron. There's smoke from the fires for the cooking. Ben's fort was a place where folks could go and get an idea of what life was like in the 1830s, 1840s. It's easy to find people here who are very passionate about the fort. It's our jewel. Uh, Southeast Colorado, it's our jewel down here. Originally built in the 1820s by the Bent and St. Vrain Company, the fort served as a trading post on the Santa Fe Trail. By the time of the, you know, 1865 and the post-Civil War, portions of the building have in fact collapsed. The fort we see today is a reconstruction. It opened in 1976 to coincide with America's bicentennial. The structure was the result of years of archaeological research and excavation. This is a building built in the mid-1970s to resemble a 19th century trading post. And yet, the same forces of nature that brought down the original fort continued to wear away at the reconstruction. For nearly 50 years, you know, Park Service managers and staff have worked around a problem we have yet to you know, find a satisfactory solution to, and that's how to sustain the building you know, in, in a low-cost method. We scheduled our visit for a Friday, one of the three days each week the fort is open under new winter hours, and a contractor also stopped by to get a better look at a falling porch on the second story. Because of the concern around, especially the asbestos in that concrete, you know, that's not something that we want our own staff to do. We're going to con contract that out. The Park Service closed off this upper level to public access for safety's sake. Quite frankly, it's embarrassing to be associated with the place. John Carson is Kit Carson's great-grandson. He taught Colorado history to high school and college students here and worked for many years as a park ranger and interpreter at the fort. He said many volunteers who once served as living historians no longer feel welcome here. I mean, it, like I said, it was a place where a person was proud to be associated with. I can't say that today. Linda Bourne, another reenactor from Rocky Ford, said that she's enjoyed participating in the fort's many special events. We couldn't do quite as much, and then this last year was really bad because we didn't get to hold near the events or on the same level. Superintendent Leonard told us that reenactors will still play a part at the fort's operation, but it's getting harder to find people willing to commit the time and money needed to fulfill those roles. And he points out that many park guests miss out on the large gatherings with multiple reenactors. Living history will always be a part of what we do, yeah. but it, you know, it might not be the best thing to do all the time. Because you know, for some, you know, historic clothing can be confusing or a little weird. There are still animals at the fort, but Leonard said there has never been a designated animal caretaker here. There's that saying of when everyone's in charge of something, it, who's in charge of something? And, and that creates some risk operationally. Members of the Ben's Fort chapter of the Santa Fe Trail Association tell us they're troubled by the lack of community input surrounding the changes. I've requested that, you know, have a meeting with uh, Mr. Leonard, uh, kind of an open forum and uh, been told he doesn't want to do that. There would have been a whole lot less anxiety if he would have held a public meeting in some way. Because the fort represents more than just a moment in history. It's part of this community's identity. It's just part of our history and it's part of this community that I, I can't even stand the thought of it not being what it has been. Superintendent Leonard said that there are many critical needs here, most notably the lack of a dedicated friends group. The National Park Service does not and cannot and never has done this work successfully by itself. And Southern Colorado can help as well simply by coming to visit. Andy Cohen, News 5. Excited.